All right, Science Navigators, this is going to be a read aloud for pages 16 through 22 from your textbook that goes along with the three phases of matter questions. So the way I see this working is you have your earbuds and you have this uh, video rolling. I, I have uh, pages 16 through 22. Uh, posted on your blend space starting at, at page 30, uh, square 38. So you can either read 38, square 38 through square 44 by yourself, or you can follow along with me as I read aloud the pages 16 through 22. So without further ado, Let's first read the questions that we're looking for in the text. Three phases of matter questions. Question number one, what crumples a plastic bubble in a syringe when you apply force to the plunger? So what crumples a plastic bubble in a syringe when you apply force to a plunger? And I can re-show you that as well. Number two, how is the motion of particles in a solid, liquid, and a gas different? Number three, why does air feel hard when you push on the plunger of a closed syringe? And number four, explain why some foam cubes get smaller in a syringe and some stay the same size. Okay, so you're probably on, if you're doing the read aloud, you are on square 38. I'm going to make it a little larger for us. And here we go. So, three phases of matter. And I'll read at a pretty good clip. You just follow along, looking at each word as I read it. On an early spring day, Arturo went out to the coast. He, walks, he walked out on a rocky point. A stiff cold wind was blowing. Wave after wave crashed on the rocks. It was a great day to experience the three phases of matter. What are the three phases of matter? Solid, liquid, and gas. The solid rocks provided a secure place to stand. The liquid water looked great as it flowed around the rocks and then retreated. And the invisible air was blowing by at a good rate. Solid, liquid, and gas matter made for a memorable day. Rock, water, and air have different properties. Rock has a definite size, which is volume, and shape. The size and the shape don't change. That is a characteristic of all solid substances. Water has a definite volume, but its shape changes. It forms waves crashes up on the shore and flows back to sea. The volume of water is always the same, but the shape depends on where it is. That is a, a characteristic of all liquid substances. Air does not have definite volume or shape. Air fills this up. I think we can see that. Air fills in around everything and can take any shape. The ability to change volume and shape is characteristic of a gaseous substance. Next page. <clears throat> Why is rock solid? Why is water liquid and air gas? The phase of a substance depends on the relationship between the particles of that substance. In a rock, the particles are stuck together. They can't move around. Attractive forces called bonds glue particles together. When particles can't move, the substance can't change, change size or shape. So this is a picture of a rock in a cup. Solids have a definite volume and shape and they sit on the bottom of their containers, just like this. This is our rolly, rolly ball. It has a volume but it, and a shape, but it sits on the bottom of the cup. 
in water, the particles are close to each other, but they are not stuck together. The particles move over and around each other. That allows water to flow. Particles in a liquid are packed close together. So the volume always stays the same. But because particles can move, the shape of the liquid can change. Liquid, liquids take the shape of their containers. So I have a liquid. It flows. It has a definite volume, but their shape changes to fill the bottom of the container. In gas, particles fly around as individuals. There's a lot of space between particles. Because they are not attached, they spread out to any spread out to fill any container. Gases have no definite shape or volume. Gases fill any container they are put into. Gases have no definite shape or volume. So if I trap some gas in this beaker, they have no definite volume and they have no definite shape. <laughs> All right, moving along. Matter as particles. Let's look at three samples of matter. One sample is a solid, one a liquid, and the third is a gas. Each sample is made of 39 particles. Each is placed in an individual container. This is how the particles would be organized in three samples. Solid, liquid, gas. 39 particles each. Applying force to matter. It's a little smaller. A syringe is a good tool for applying force to samples of matter. We can put a plunger into each of the cylinders above to see what happens when force is applied to a solid, liquid, and a gas. The particles of a solid are touching and bonded tightly. Force cannot change the shape. Okay, so the particles in a solid, this would represent a solid, tightly bond together. Force cannot change their shape. This would be a liquid. The particles of a liquid are, are touching, but they can move. The force can change the shape of liquid but cannot push the particles any closer together. This is a gas. The particles of a gas have a lot of space between them. Force can change the shape of the gas and can push the particles close together. Just like we've seen many times when we've pushed, oops, if I close the bottom, push them together. Can't do that with a liquid, can't do that with a solid. Okay, let's go to the next page. Reading along, so you're doing a good job following me as I read the words. Solids and liquids aren't very interesting in a closed syringe. They can't be forced into smaller space, but the particles are already in contact with one another. But there's a lot of space between gas particles. Gas can be compressed. The particles of compressed gas are forced closer together. But there is a limit to how much gas can be compressed. At first, it is easy to push the plunger down. The air inside the syringe feels spongy. But the farther down you push the plunger, the harder the air feels. Why is that? The air particles are flying around inside this syringe very fast. When they crash into the plunger and the walls of the syringe, they apply force. So they apply force. Moving air particles apply force to everything they hit. When gas is pushed into a smaller space, the concentration of particles increases. That results in more particles hitting the plunger every second. The particles pushing on the plunger tip are what makes it first hard and then impossible to push the plunger farther. The force pushing the plunger down, which is the blue arrow, that would be me pushing the plunger down, is opposed to the force applied by the increased number of air particles, green. So these, these particles push back. So force down, and it's pushed back by the air particles. Let's move on to the next section. This is page 20. Bubble in a syringe, a plastic, bubble filled with air crumples up when you compress the air around it. Can you figure out why? When air is compressed, the air particles hit everything with more force. 
They hit the plunger, the walls of the syringe barrel, and the plastic surrounding the air in the bubble. The plastic pushes on the air inside the bubble. The air inside the bubble compresses, just like the air outside the bubble. The number of air particles inside the bubble stays the same, but the space occupied by those bubbles, the volume is smaller. The plastic bubble crumples around the smaller volume of the air. A syringe with an air bubble before the plunger is pushed, a syringe with the air bubble after the plunger has been pushed in. Air is compressed in the syringe and the bubble. This causes the bubble to crumple, and we did this in class. So I have a bubble, and I can make it crumple without, I don't even know if you can see that. You can see it a little bit. Move that. All right, moving along. Page 21. Foam cubes. Remember in class, we, we, we sort of investigated these foam cubes. There are two kinds of foam rubber. The little spaces in the foam rubber are called cells. In an open cell foam rubber, all of the cells are connected to each other and to the outside. In a closed cell foam rubber, the cells are not connected. Each cell is like a little bubble. This is open, that means there's little openings to the outside, and this one's closed. Air particles in an open cell foam can move freely in and out of the cells. Air particles in the closed cell foam cannot move in and out of the cells. Put an open cell foam cube and a closed cell foam cube in a syringe. The cubes are the same size. The particles are the same distance apart in and around the cubes. Air particles are evenly distributed in and around the cubes. The cubes are the same size. So we did that in class. Moving along. Last page. When you apply pressure to a plunger, the distance between the air particles in and around the cube gets smaller. The distance is smaller because the air particles have been pushed closer together and the two foam cubes no longer look alike. The open cell foam cube stays the same size. When the pressure increases, more air particles move into the open cells. When the air is compressed, there are more particles inside the open cell foam cube. So as this is compressed, the blue one shrinks, the gray one does not. The closed cell foam gets smaller. As particles excuse me, air particles can't enter the closed cells. The air particles outside the closed cell cube push. They push on the cube until the distance between the particles in the cube is the same as the distance between the particles outside the cube. The only way this can happen is if the cells in the cube get smaller. Each tiny cell crumples and gets smaller, just like the plastic bubble. So the questions you need to try and answer. Number one, what crumples a plastic bubble in a syringe when you apply force to the plunger? So the plastic bubble, what makes it crumple? How is the motion of the particles in a solid, liquid, and gas different? Number three, why does air feel hard when you push on the plunger? And number four, explain why some foam cubes get smaller in a syringe and some stay the same size. So. We have listened and read along with pages 16 through 22. Now it's your turn to try and do your best job using complete sentences, filling the lines to answer those questions. Thank you for listening.